The Nature of Light. The Nature of Light was discovered by this man, James Clerk Maxwell, in the uh, 19th century. And he was studying electric fields, whoops, electric fields, and magnetic fields because he noticed there were similarities between the two. In an electric field, like charges repel. In a magnetic field, like magnetic poles repel. In an electric field, unlike charges attract. In a magnetic field, unlike magnetic poles attract. So he looked to see, is there a connection? And what he found was, yes, there is, and that you can actually create an electric field from a magnetic field, and you can create a magnetic field from an electric field. And the key is that you have to have one moving or changing. And so charged particles, if they are moving, which they all do because they have a temperature, that is what actually creates light. Because what happens is, here's our charged particle moving back and forth. That causes the electric field, in red here, to wiggle back and forth. And it turns out that if you have an electric field wiggling back and forth, that creates a magnetic field that wiggles back and forth, which then creates an electric field, which then creates a magnetic field. And what Maxwell discovered was the rate that this propagates is the speed of light. And so he made the conclusion that light is actually this combination of an electric field and a magnetic field. And that's why you sometimes hear light referred to as electromagnetic radiation. When you have light, one way to characterize light is as a wave. And so here we have an illustration of a light wave. So this would continue on. And the way we characterize that wave is by the wavelength. And our symbol for wavelength is this funky looking thing. It's a Greek letter lambda. Looks kind of like an upside down Y. And our definition of wavelength is the distance between successive peaks of a wave. So if you have a wave where the peaks are really close together, we would say that's a short wavelength. And I'm going to use my abbreviation for wavelength. If you have waves where the peaks are very far apart, that's a long wavelength. Now another way we can represent our wave is using frequency. And this uses uh, another funky Greek letter, uh, this is the Greek letter nu. And frequency is defined as the number of waves, or actually peaks, that pass a point in one second. So if you have a lot of peaks very close together, that's going to be a high frequency because you have a lot of peaks going by in that one second. If your peaks are farther apart, because all light travels at the same speed, you're not going to have as many peaks go by. That is a low frequency. So short wavelength is a high frequency, 
long wavelength is a low frequency. And I wanted to mention units for these things. Um, in the case of wavelength, typically we're going to measure our units in nanometers. So that's a nanometer. That is taking one millimeter and dividing it into a million parts. So it's a very tiny unit. For frequency, the unit is in hertz, which you have likely heard that term used. So, you know, a frequency of 420 hertz means 420 peaks go by in one second. So those are our ways of representing a wave of light. And when we look at the visible spectrum, um, our mnemonic is Roy G. Biv for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So Roy G. Biv. We don't do indigo because I mean, if you look at the actual picture here, it's blue and then it's violet. There isn't really indigo in there. I think that was thrown in just to make Biv spell out a word. So our color spectrum, the colors of the rainbow, what you're actually seeing is light split up from red, which is the longest wavelength, to violet, which is the shortest wavelength, that our eyes can see. There are waves beyond violet, shorter than violet, that we cannot see with our eyes, and longer than red, that we cannot see with our eyes. But this is the visible spectrum. So every time light passes through a raindrop, the raindrop is just dividing it up based on wavelength. And that's why you always get the same order of colors. But light has a strange property. It's called the dual nature of light. That it behaves not only just as a wave, but also as a particle. And in my mind's eye, I always picture these particles as like little raindrops. And so take that for what it's worth. No, they are not really little raindrops. But we call these little particles of light a photon. And where the wave we represented by the wavelength or the frequency, photons we think of in terms of their energy. It's kind of like a little energy packet. And our unit for that energy is an electron volt which is a strange combination of things, but it's basically the amount of energy needed to uh, move an electron through one volt's worth of uh, potential for you physics fans. So that's our unit for the energy of light. And comparing the energy to the colors, red is our low energy. So long wavelength is low energy. If you think about the jiggling atom, to make a long wavelength, that atom doesn't jiggle back and forth very fast. It's very slowly jiggling, and so our wave just very slowly gets produced. Blue is our higher energy. Now our little charged particles moving back quickly. And so moving quickly, we get a lot of waves produced. So short wavelength is high energy. So that tells us the nature of light, both in terms of a wave and in terms of a particle.